Hello lovely people and welcome to part 2 of my Monarch Butterfly crochet tutorial. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, make sure to go there first, I'll link to it in the description box below. And if you've already watched part 1 and crocheted along with me, thank you so much. Great to have you back. In this part we will do the embroidery and the assembly of the butterfly. So. Let's get started with that. So now we can get to the very exciting part of embroidering the veins on the wings. And so I'm starting with the right forewing. I think when I started filming the video I called it upper wing and since then I've finished um, editing the written PDF pattern and the Ribla pattern and um, I took a look at the, the uh, anatomy of a butterfly and actually <laughs> learned the proper words to describe all the body parts so those are four wings <laughs> and so I'm just wheeling in these two yarn ends these shorter ones So this is the back side. You can also just bring it inside the wing and make a really long stitch as long as you can. And then you can could make another stitch to the the other black or whatever color it may be for you to that part and weave it in there. But I'm lazy and I know that. My butterfly can handle it. I'm not going to put it in the washing machine or anything like that. So, no need to weave in the yarn and sew super securely. Do the same with the pink one or orange one. And that's it. So now, we can take this very long yarn end and thread it on our needle. And here I have my little example butterfly just for me as a guide. And so we start by going through The next stitch here, just because we want the yarn end on the, we want you know everything to look smooth here on around the base of the wing, and this is where we want the yarn end to be to make this first stitch. And so the stitches should look nice from the reverse side as well as the top side and that's what makes it a bit tricky. I hope you can follow along with me. I hope I get it as nice as I did here. And yeah, if you need like step-by-step -step images, then you can always get the PDF pattern that's available for a small fee on Etsy or you could also go for the Ribla version, which I love. So that's also available for a small fee if you prefer looking at pictures and um, instead of maybe pausing the video or these kind of things. But you can also, if I go, should I go too fast, you can also always slow the video down. There's a little settings icon in the bottom, I think. If you click on that, then you can adjust the speed if it's going too fast. And so the first thing we do, we want to count these rows here, these pink rows, pink slash orange rows. So we count to three, one, two, three. And so this is where we insert our needle. Just make sure that on, on the other side, on the back, it's the same spot. Sometimes Everything's shifted a bit and it's not the same spot. So just 
the first nice stitch done. So on the other side, we'll make the stitch later on. Um, for now, we focus on getting this part done. And so now this is the reverse side of the wing. And so we want to get here to this. And so on the, on the reverse side, it's this stitch here. So it's not this one where I think I made a double crochet increase. It's the one below. And that's the same spot on the other side. So that's where we want our needle to come out now. And so on the reverse side, we have the first stitch in this direction. So we want five stitches like this close next to each other that make this bold stripe here. And so, so this same stitch is where we go through pull this whole yarn in through here. And now we move toward this side slowly. So we just make another stitch close next to it. And for this, we can also go through spots like this here. Um, it doesn't really matter actually. I do have my written pattern here, but this part, honestly, I would improvise. If you want, you can, of course, exactly follow the pattern that will work, but, you know, just anywhere to have to create this bolder stripe, just anywhere close to the existing stitch. Just make another stitch like this. So now we have two on this side. On this side, we only have one, but to create a stitch close to the existing one, it would make sense to go through this spot here. Through this single crochet stitch here. Let's see how that goes. So now we have two on each side and now here, this time I'm going through the proper stitch here that I crocheted in, I'm making sure that I come out in the same spot on the other side. So now we have three, these are a bit overlapping. This is also not a problem. It doesn't have to be a perfectly parallel stripe. It can be a bit broader on one side than it is on the other, at least in my opinion. And so now I'm going through here, through this stitch here. So now we have three stitches on each side. So now let's see. Now I'm just going through this, through this. I think it's a half double crochet stitch. Through this one here, just to Make the fourth stitch on the reverse side. That's looking good. And now on this side, I'm gonna go through in between these two stitches. Or, yeah, actually that's like going through the stitch. And that's four stitches on each side, one more to go on each side. So now I'm going through here, through this spot. So the, on the back, on the reverse side, the stripe is actually done. 
and actually I lied because it's going to be five stitches on the front, six stitches on the reverse side. So <laughs> now I'm going through this spot here. And now the stripe is done on the front side of the wing and here we have one more to go actually. So I just place it in the same spot that I did previously because we don't need the stripe to be any broader than it already is. So we come out the same spot again here. So now this big stripe is done. And so now we move three stitches further in this direction and to do that we just count like I'm now here in the middle this was an increased stitch that I made here but I'm just counting because I'm kind of in the middle in between them I'm just counting yes just double checking I'm counting this one as the first stitch So I'm just catching a loop to just weave the yarn in through here. I just want to get to this spot here. Then I go through the side of this stitch. That's the second one. And then I go through the side of this stitch and so now we're here and now we can make a parallel stitch parallel to this broad stripe so you can either just lay it out like this and then just see where it looks best maybe if we go through here just make sure that it's the same roughly the same spot on the other side as well or if you want to be precise you can count so there should be seven rounds on this side one two three four five six seven that's the distance that you go and then you can also count the stitches so there should be well if you count these below there should be two complete stitches before uh, in between this stitch and the black border here but with this row that's above this stitch there are actually three so let's just see how that looks Yeah, I think I should have gone up. I should have stuck to my pattern. <laughs> so this. This is what would have looked better. Making sure you get through the same spot on the other side. Yes, there are two stitches space. Okay, so there should only be two stitches space as explained in the pattern, so in the written pattern. Yeah, so that looks better. And so now we do the same on the reverse side. Here you really just need to see, that's just easiest to just check, okay, how, how can I make this line parallel to this broad line? And it's, if you go through this stitch here, just or just count one, two, three from the broad stripe. One, two, three. So this is where we come out. And now we go three stitches this way again. But this one where we just came out, this already counts as the first one. 
You just go through it again from the side just to hide this yarn and a bit better so that it doesn't look too obvious. And then we go through the next stitch sideways. And through the next one sideways. And so now we can make the next upward stitch again parallel to the existing. And so with this one, you can count one, two, three, four. And this is where you want the stitch to go and again the distance in between where you stitch through and this border should be the same as it was here before and yeah i think i'm going through here so just making sure that it's the same spot on the other side So this is looking good. So you can see that we're already done on the front side. And now we just need to finish the back. And we want to end up here. So it's a little bit, you know, like this painting, this, when you know, this little house. <laughs> we used to paint it, like we used to draw that. In primary school and you're not supposed to you have to do it in one line that's kind of what we're doing here and so we count the stitches these stitches here one two three so this is where we go through and yeah that really doesn't matter that much where you get out on the other side just not anywhere on the pink slash orange area Okay, so and that's how it looks. One, two, three, four. Okay. That's not fully parallel, but fine. I prioritize the front side when it comes to these things. So. The front, yeah, the front should definitely be pretty, although the back should be pretty too, but, you know, the front side has priority. So now we just go through all these stitches, through the side of all these stitches, until we get here, so that we can make this final long stitch and finish with the upper wing or fore wing embroidery. Now this can be a bit tricky if you have such a big yarn needle as I do. So I just go through it one by one, but I don't have to bother you with this. <laughs> you can pause the video here. <laughs> so beware, beware of the long yarn and tangling. <laughs> so once you're here at this spot, just hit play and we'll finish embroidering the four wing. So now I'm here and we just need to bring the yarn to the other side now. So I just go through the stitch. And so now we are in the right spot. And so we just go under all these stitches to mimic this long stitch on the other side and this is where we want it to go let's see here so now i just go through this stitch here Pull that through and that's it. So here we have the reverse side and 
this is the front side. So that's the four wing done, the right four wing. For the other one, I'm just going to mirror this video and maybe speed it up um, or maybe not. But um, yeah, the point is that I don't talk you through all of it again, which I bet is boring. So <laughs> you can just crochet along with me and turn on your favorite music.
Next, we're going to embroider the veins on the hind wings. So I've already done the right hind wing and the other one is going to be mirrored, of course. So don't worry, I'm going to show you both. But what I'll do is I'll record um, this one and then I'm going to mirror it. So this way, I think you'll be able to get it more symmetrical than I did. I mean, it always looks slightly different every time, which is absolutely fine if that happens to you as well. I just thought if I'm doing it the exact same way because I um, flipped the video that I'm filming, then maybe it's even more helpful than... Um, you know, and <laughs> doing both wings because it's the same thing, it's just mirrored. So first again, we insert these short two yarn ends. And then I'm gonna cut them short. I just needed a little bit more space, so just move the camera up slightly. And so I'm going to thread this long yarn tail on my yarn needle. And so here you can see we started um, not in the center, but more toward the left. So with the other one, we start more toward the right or you know, the other way around, depending on which one you're um, embroidering now. First, I'm just going to insert the needle here to just finish off this. Round, of course, for a very neat um, result, you could make an invisible, what I call an invisible finish. Then I should have skipped another stitch, but I don't take it so serious, you know, this step because this is where we'll attach the wing to the body anyway. And so it won't be noticeable if this bit doesn't look perfect. So now we just want to get to this spot. So I encourage you to have the other wing if you already made one next to or close, close to you. So... that we can sometimes compare and just go through this, through this stitch from the back. This is now the back of the wing. And through another stitch. From the reverse side. And so now I go through here, through this stitch. No, but actually I need to go through this one here. So you just try, try it out, play around with it until you feel like you're in the right spot. So this looks like it's the same spot. And yeah, it's not on top. There's one pink row already here, so that's looking good. So then what we do is we count four, or sorry, five rows down from the top or four rows from where we are. So one, two, three, four, five. And this is where we now insert our needle. And to the left, in this case, the outer side, let's call it the outer side, there should be three stitches space. So it's quite the center. Now I'm in the center and I have five rows on top of where I'm inserting the needle. 
So let's try this. And then check that it's the same on the back. It's not, so the needle, it's a bent needle, so it went slightly up. So one, two, three, four. This counts as five because that's the magic. Oh no, it's not the magic one. It's the last round, but I think I just crocheted over that here on the back. So it's fine. So from the bottom, we need four rows. So you can double check this way as well. One, two, three, four. Row space from the bottom, one, two, three, four. So that's that should be correct. And this is the front side. Now we turn it to the back. So I recommend turning this one as well so you don't get confused. So now we want to get to this, this we mainly embroider on this side. Um, so here it is, the left side, since I flipped it around now. So now we make a tiny stitch and the stitch goes just, it's like one row down and one row to the side. Whichever side it is you're doing now. And then just check on the other side. No, oh, this would be too straight. No, that it looks the same on the other side. So here it's also like one row down, one stitch to the side. That's looking good. So this is the reverse side. Now back to the front side. Let's flip this as well so we don't get confused. Now it would be good if we had like two stitches, go two stitches to the side. Um, yeah, so there's only one stitch space in between this border and the edge, the black edge and where I insert my needle now. On the other side, it's looking good as well. Even if it's one and a half stitches, that's fine. We just want, if possible, more than one stitch should be wider than one stitch. So I think that's good. Now we can reverse. So here we go one, two rows up and then here on the side where the black border is, that's where we go through. So flip back to the front side. Right, so now we move back and so we do the stitches on this side that we didn't do on the other side and vice versa. Um, that we did do on the other side but <laughs> not on this side. I hope that made sense. I'm not sure what I was saying. <laughs> so the important thing is that we insert our needle here in this same spot that we already inserted it before and double check that it's the same spot on the other side as well. And then we go through there. So that's looking good. And now we do this stitch. We may make this stitch on the other side. So this means we just go through here to here to this stitch to connect them both. So on the reverse side, it looks like this. And on the front side it looks like this and now we connect these two so just making sure that we go in the same stitch and on the reverse side it's also the same spot go through there and now we make the first of these um, downward lines, these four ones, this long one we make now, but first on the reverse side. So it's this one, but mirrored. And so we want this to go here. 
you can already see we have one, two, three, four lines here. This one is the the one along the edge. So you can already see. Okay, one goes here. One, two, three, and four or four. But this one, two, three, four. Yeah, this one looks best to me. Most it looks more similar to what we did here. So this is where I'm going through and make sure to come out in the same spot on the other side. Sometimes everything's shifting and you come out in a different spot, which we don't want. So that's the rear side. Now flip over to the front side again. And this stitch goes here. So where this long one is and this shorter one, that's where we go through. Make sure it's the same spot on the, the other side. Pull that through. So that's how it looks from the front. And now we make this long upward stitch here on the reverse side. So here we can just see, okay, where did this go? It went here. So that's where we want it to go again. You can just see here. So yeah, that's pretty much the spot. And that's where we go through. So this is the reverse side. This is the front side. So let's flip over to the front. Now we're going all the way down. Actually, it doesn't really matter which way here. I'm just going to go this way and we also make the remaining three veins here. So for this one, I just these stitches that we created by crocheting in the side of the wing. We just count two, so one, two, that's where we go through. And so it looks from the front, this is the reverse. And again, counting down one, two of these stitches. So that's where we make the next one. And this is where we came out. So now one, two, again, downward, stitching through. Here we are on the reverse side and we count again, one, two, go through here. And now we're in the perfect spot for making the next vein here. So it goes this way. So here in between those two stitches, we insert our needle again. Just making sure we come out in the same spot. And then we do the same on the reverse side and go through this spot here, the next stitch here. So that's the reverse side and this is the front side. Here we have the front side of the wing. So now we move on to the next stitch so we stitch through here and turn everything around now the third of these veins goes in between so it doesn't go here that's where the fourth one goes it goes in between the second and fourth so as far in the center as possible 
center of this stitch so that's where it goes through and then carefully check where you get out I want this to come out under this horizontal stitch so that's looking good and that's done this one I think this one is turning out nicer than the first one I made which is good because I'm recording this one not the other so here we now go through this stitch here that's it now reverse side for the reverse we move up one stitch go through here that's it turn it all around and now we make the fourth vein here so we go through here where this corner is and that's it go through here or oh, this is how it looks on the front side and now we make the same stitch on the reverse side so we go through this spot here and that's it so this is the front side and now we move all the way up and then go around again because we only did every other two stitches so this needs to be fixed so we fill up these gaps so now we go up two stitches one two just all around the edge and then from the other side go up two one two and go up two stitches one two and one two again And now here there's one stitch left so so now we're we've gone all around and now we can fill these gaps so on this side we want to fill this gap so that's this is where we stitch through and here we're filling this gap so we go through here can always move this stitch a little bit where you want it to go okay now we're filling this gap so we go through here it's looking good oh this is when you don't check <laughs> where it's coming out on the other side but it's easily fixable this is the right spot now now we're closing this gap and now this one here so we go through here turn around and then we go through here Turn around and here we have just a small gap that's just one stitch and then 
Again, two stitches wide gap here. And now we're closing this gap. Mm -hmm. Turn around, close the next gap. And this little gap here. So the front looks already nice and neat and then Oh, I came out in the wrong spot. <laughs> so I'll correct that. Or, you know what, I just leave it because this was, it's just this little gap here left. <laughs> but if you would be more accurate, then you would have come out here and close this gap again. So, yeah, I just want to keep it real and show you that I don't do everything perfectly always. So, I think that's absolutely fine. <laughs> I leave it this way and, yeah, this is just the part that's close to the body. That's fine. <laughs>
So now the rest we can use to attach the wings, the rest of the yarn in. But first we're going to do the next part of the embroidery. For the four wings we're going to embroider along this side and then on this broader stripe. We need quite a bit of embroidery floss. I'm using yellow but of course you could use white if you make the original monarch butterfly. And so it's okay if you don't cut enough. I have here, I would say that's 80 centimeters or 32 inches, quite a bit. And so I'm using a large eyed sewing needle because we go through the fibers. And so I'm going to thread this. And so we start here and work our way up. So we have two rows of very tiny stitches. So I'm just from the reverse side. Let me just start here. I'm just going to go through close to the pink part here or the orange part in your case. Let's do this one row first. So one row is closer to the orange, one closer to the edge. I just leave a long, um, yeah, not too short end here that will hide later. First we can keep it there and now I just make tiny stitches. They are only like half a single crochet stitch wide. So I just go through here and I go through both layers at the same time. So we have to recreate the pattern on both sides simultaneously. So that's just a little stitch. I recommend not pulling the thread too tight because we want the stitch to be visible. We don't want it to disappear. So then I make a small stitch to the other side. And again, tiny stitch through all the layers and this is how I work myself around the wing. So I do this with the long thread, come tangle, tangling in knots sometimes. So let me just detangle this. The thing is, I'm happy to deal with it rather than. You know, not having a long enough thread and then having to join it again. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit of a bit of a lazy one when it comes to this kind of things. <laughs> I actually have to use my yarn needle to fix that. So all sorted. So let's continue. So I continued these tiny stitches all the way around up to this point here where 
we have this broad um, stripe. So you can pause the video here and embroider all the way to this spot here. So now I got all the way to this spot here. And so next we can embroider a little round here on this broad stripe and then go all the way back to do the second row. So it doesn't really matter where on which side you're at now. I'm here, here my thread is coming out of the reverse side. And yeah, so this we will add like five to six longer stitches here on the stripe. And of course they won't be identical on both sides they will be in slightly different spots but that's absolutely fine so i make my last tiny stitch here and then i go through just place my other butterfly there to look at the original <laughs> So now I'm making my last tiny stitch here and go through, like not stitching through all the layers. I'm now in the inside of the wing, so to speak. And I just go through somewhere here, a little bit further. Yeah, somewhere here, closer to the outer edge of the wing. And here it can be tricky to pull the needle through. Just if I turn it this way, it's easier for me. Um, if you have um, pliers, flat pliers, that's the word. <laughs> We have those that um, they will be useful anyway for the legs later on. Then you can sometimes use them to pull the needle out when it gets stuck. So from here we start embroidering um, on this larger stripe. So on both sides simultaneously again. So these stitches can be a bit longer. I just go through here. And at the same time, I come out here to make my first stitch on the front side. So let's see how it turns out. That's the reverse side. And here we're at the front side now. So now I'm Making my first stitch here on the front side. It's, I, I guess this is about half a centimeter long. So coming out on the reverse side, slightly underneath the previous stitch. And carefully pulling this through. And now I can do the second stitch on the reverse side. Going this way. I'm not too, um, you know, precise with this. The, all of the butterflies I made so far look different and I think that's fine. So I'm coming out here, stitching through here. Then we do our second stitch on the front side. Let's go through here and this is where we come out on the reverse side.
It's looking good so far. One third stitch here on the reverse side on this stripe. My priority is to make the front side look pretty. Um, but yeah, trying to do a good job with both sides as far as possible. So I think I'll keep it to five stitches. Looks somehow nicer to me with this one, I think. So here's where I come out. Um, and that's it. And here I make it longer stitch now the one in the bottom I'd like to be longer and here as well on the reverse side I want one that's in the bottom that's longer so I'm gonna have my needle exit there Doesn't look much longer than the rest, but that's fine. So also you can um, do two stitches in the same spot on top of each other to make them look bolder if you like. I'm gonna try that with this one. Go through here again. And at the same time make a new stitch on the reverse side. And now I go through the same spot. And the one on the reverse side, I also want bolder, so going through the same spot here as well. This turned out to be a tricky spot, so. That's it. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna give a second layer or add a second layer to the stitch here and stitch through somewhere further up to do the last two or maybe even three stitches, I still haven't decided yet. Um, let's see, that's looking good. And one here. Another stitch and the next one on the reverse side is gonna go here. You know, there's no rule really with this, I just... I think we can be creative with this, <laughs> although you can look at a picture of a monarch butterfly and do it more precisely <laughs> if you want. So few more stitches to go. Let's put this one here and then the next one. Maybe here. And one more on this side. Let's 
Oh, I think it's going to be six stitches after all. So one more is going to go here. And then I'll also add another one. A small one here in between these two. So that's the reverse side done. And here on the front, I'll just make a tiny stitch and then we're going to continue with this second row here. So I'm stitching through exactly where this starts. So right next to the tiny stitch, the last tiny stitch here. That's where I want my needle to exit. That's looking good. Yeah, we're just going with this. Okay. So, that's this done. So now we go all the way back around. I just place the stitches um, exactly next to the existing ones, just on the outside. So. This one goes here and then checking that it goes next to the close to the existing stitch on the other side as well. So they are going to be very close together like this. Next one here is going to go there. Next one parallel to the existing one again. And so this is what we do all the way around. So you can pause the video here and then I just show you how to finish this off. So I reached this spot where we started and now all we have to do is just make a final stitch, tiny stitch, and I just go in, stitch somewhere through inside the wing. Be careful not to, you know, hurt yourself and I'm going to go through here and then I'm going to cut the thread short. So this is the first end and then we'll do the same with the other one. There we go. Then we simply cut those short. And that's it. This is the reverse side. This is the front side. So now you can repeat this with the other four wing. And then we're going to finish embroidering the hind wings.
So now we can embroider the markings on the hind wings. This is much more straightforward. Here you can see we just embroider along this outer edge here. And so I just cut an about 16 inch, 40 centimeter long piece of embroidery floss. And so we just start here in this corner. Just go through from the reverse side to the front and just leave a long enough thread end just to make our final stitch in the end when we're finished. And as we did with the four wings, I just make tiny stitches going through here. Just make sure that you don't go through in between stitches. It's actually better to catch um, a few or catch the fibers, you know, go through in between the fibers of the yarn because this way you have much more control over where the stitch goes. So it doesn't really matter how many stitches you fit. For me, sometimes it's seven, sometimes eight. It doesn't really matter as long as you're happy with the result. So I'll just go along the edge this way. You can pause the video here all the way up to this point here, more or less. And then we add the second row together. So now I crochet along the edge here and I'm on the other side. I just add a final stitch on this side and I already have my needle come out on the other side ready to make the parallel stitch to this last one that I made. So that's it and yeah here we just add one stitch to each existing one also on the other side and it doesn't matter which side you finished and you know they are they should both look the same so it doesn't really matter so now adding one small stitch next to this one and trying to move my needle so that I come out here to add a second stitch next to this one. That's it. And going through here. Adding another. A second stitch to each of the existing ones. Here I pulled the thread I think too much but you can always if that happens you can always pull the stitches out a bit using your needle. And yeah we're just trying to embroider both sides at the same time so always come out on the other side ready to make the next stitch on that side. And this one goes here. And this is now we move on all the way to the other side here. So you can pause the video here and hit play to let me show you how to do the last two stitches if you don't know already. So I'm just making my last stitch on this side coming out here and now I'm making my last two stitches on the reverse side and as we did with the four wings I just stitched through somewhere 
trying to make it a long stitch pulling this through so we can then cut it short and we repeat the same with the other thread end and there we go one final stitch next to this one And that's it. Now we just cut these two short. And that means the embroidery part is done. So now we can move on to the assembly of our butterfly. Whenever you have a little yarn pieces coming out, you can also push them back inside that will do <laughs> now it's finally time to assemble our butterfly and so one thing to keep in mind I got it wrong with one of the butterflies is that the wings the hind wings should be sewn on in, in this way so these four veins that are close to each other they should be pointing outward um, and it's a bit tricky since both sides um, have the embroidery on so for one of the butterflies I <laughs> attach the wings this way so just just a little warning and so we start with the hind wings the four wings come later so let's begin with just one of them so let's thread this yarn end on our yarn needle and so we attach the hind wing in between round five and six of the body so here you can see this is the magic ring and then this is around one two three four five so here is where it goes so we just catch maybe two loops or just go, yeah, maybe two loops are better. At this point, it doesn't matter where because it's the first wing. This is looking good. So I just go through here. And yeah, this is the way. So this is the, the upper side, the one that we want showing up upward and so this is how it will be attached slightly pointing downward so this is something to keep in mind when sewing it on so don't sew it on this way sew it on so that it points slightly downward so we'll just attach this wing on two stitches here at the base of the wing so I'll just go through here just catching this this whole stitch and then I go through here a little bit higher than where I inserted the needle before. Here we go. And then again through the wing. Somewhere here at the base. And we want it to be slightly downward pointing so keeping this in mind I just go through here and then also go here through another third point here on the body
go. <laughs> and maybe once more through the wing here. So this is looking good. And now we can weave in this yarn in here. So I just go through the body somewhere. And weave it in with a few stitches. So now we attach the other hind wing. And so this goes the same way. The only thing to keep in mind is that we have about three stitches space in between wings. Well, more like two because we took like one stitch to attach the wing. Like one stitch is hidden here behind the wing. So like two, two and a half just on the other side. So one, two, three, four, five. This is where the middle point is. Or where we start attaching the wings and just making sure that it's the right way around, which it is. And going through the wing, through the base of the wing here. So this is all the same, so you can see pretty much on the other side. And going one round higher here. And back through. The wing and moving downward so that we can attach this side here. Going through the body and then through the wing on this side, making sure that it's a bit pointing downward. One more through, one more stitch through the body. And one more through the wing, and then we can weave this yarn end in as well. There we go. So that's the hind wings done. So now we go for the fore wings. And so thread the long yarn end on our needle. And so the four wings are attached on round three and four. So one, two, three, and four here. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes. So We start here. That's now right above the spot where we finished attaching the hind wing. That's where we go through the body. 
and bend through the base of the wing here the the lower corner of the base of the wing if you want to call it that this is where you go through and so the the upper wing will slightly overlap with the lower wing so that's just something else to keep in mind we'll go through the same spot again in this case you know I, I don't you know it's these things to me they turn out slightly different every time so go with what what makes sense what do you feel makes sense so now I'm going one stitch higher here through the base of the wing through here and then I go through the next spot on the body so this is kind of in between row two and three And that's it. Now I just go through the same spots on the way back down, so to speak, just to attach it a little firmer. Maybe go through here to make the stitch less obvious. And again through the body here. And through the wing. And now what we do is we attach a part of the, the upper wing to the lower wing just so that they kind of stay in place in a nice way. Just here um, up to this point. Point. So just go through the upper wing here and then we just go through both layers so I just catch the stitch here of the lower wing this is where I go through and laying the, the upper wing on top of it, slightly, having it slightly overlap. I go through the upper wing as well and then I just make one stitch to the side and again go through both layers. So I go enter here with my needle and exit here and then again enter here in the lower wing going back up again and now this is enough the rest we can just leave open and then just move back to the toward the body so that we can weave this yarn end in. There we go, so now we go ahead and weave this yarn end in and then we attach the last wing. So now the last wing and so we do exactly the same on the other side just above where we attach, we, we finished attaching the lower wing we go through and 
pick up a loop in between row three and four and then go through the base of the wing so i just let you get on with this because we've done it together on the other side so once you've attached this last wing, then we can go ahead and embroider the belly together. So for the belly, I took uh, maybe just 30 or 35 centimeter, like um, 12, 12, 13, 14 inch long piece of embroidery floss so uh, yours would be white mine is yellow and now we just embroider the belly with a few stitches and so I just start um, about here where the wings begin and so I just uh, make zigzag stitches so first I start on this side of the Body. So I just go through here, again leaving a long enough yarn and to hide it in the end, and then I just zigzag up. So going up this way, oh, I caught a loop there that I wasn't supposed to catch. And again, like a diagonal stitch upward. By the way, it doesn't have to be this way. This is just what I came up with. So we do this a few times until we have like six or seven stitches on this side of the body. So I'm just every time I stitch diagonally upward this way, upward and outward. And two more on this side, all the way to the head here. So now I have five stitches here and then with the sixth stitch I cross over so I put it here like diagonally upward inward this time because now I'm moving to the other side to repeat the same things the same stitches on the other side so stitching through about there and that's it so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's right. Or it doesn't really matter how many you have. Now I repeat this on the other side here. So stitching diagonally downward and inward this time. trying to make it symmetrical so that both stitches the stitches on both sides are at the same height more or less And a couple more. The 
here we go. And now with this last stitch, I go through the, to the center here. And so we'll add one more row of stitches straight upward, like vertical stitches. Um, so I'm stitching through to the center in between these stitches. And now I'm just going upward and kind of weave almost the needle in, in between these stitches to make some upward facing stitches, uh, so edge some vertical stitches in the center here. Like so I'm just making a few small stitches all the way up. this a few more And now with the last stitch, I make it a really long stitch because I'm going to then cut off the thread here. That's it. And now I'll do the same with this one here. So now we thread this end on our needle. This will make it easier to get it in. So just make one additional stitch here in the bottom and make a long stitch through the body. Cut this thread short. And so that's the belly embroidered. So this means if you don't add any legs and antenna to your monarch butterfly, then it means that you're done. And that's it. This is great if you have little ones playing with it then I highly recommend leaving it like this the wire makes it unsafe to play with so please don't add any wire if it's meant as a toy but if it's more like decoration or an ornament or for older humans <laughs> then you can of course go ahead and attach the legs and antenna together with me now so now we can go ahead and attach the legs and antenna. Um, my position is a bit awkward because I needed more light and so I'm upstairs. But upstairs I don't have a desk so I'm sitting kind of on the floor. Um, yeah, just if you're wondering why my hands come from, <laughs> from above. So for this we need craft wire. Um, don't mind my rusty pieces here. <laughs> This is the, are the last bits that I could find. I forgot to buy a new one. And so that's what I'll be using. Um, so you need two pieces of seven centimeter craft wire, which is 2.8 inches and one five centimeter long one, which is about two inches long. And this is quite a sturdy 
wire so it can be of course bent by hand but it, there's quite a lot of resistance to it so that's good because then our butterfly can stand on its leg later on we also need yarn so this would be black yarn in your case if you're making the original monarch butterfly or any color you like really or any color you used for the body maybe and so we need three pieces of at least 30 centimeter um 12 inch inches long or maybe even a bit longer but i don't i don't really think it's necessary and so let's begin with the first set of legs and so we attach them in between round five and six of the body so that would be one two three four five so kind of here where the the upper wings and the lower wings end and the, the upper wings begin so i'm just going through with this wire piece to the other side so just kind of use it as a needle there we go so there if even if there's only one stitch now in between both ends that's enough i think i caught a little more this time but that's fine as long as it's all nice and centered and both sides should have the same length you can just measure by by eye like this that should be all right and then you bend them upwards and so here we have the two legs and now you can see that one is longer that doesn't matter because we'll bend them over anyway and cut off what isn't needed but first let me move them a bit to the side first we take one of these pieces of yarn and thread it on our yarn needle if you have a smaller one this would come in handy now mine is a little bit big for this um because now we want to get it through the same spot as we just um the same spot where we just inserted the wire through and so mine is almost too big for that oh but it's okay <laughs> all right so now we have the wire there as well as the yarn and we also want the yarn ends both to be the same length so that's all done now and now we get to the potentially messy part <laughs> so now we need some glue i'm using super, super glue i find that easiest then everything gets glued together quickly um, maybe first i should have let's see maybe cut down here it is cut this side a little bit to the same length yeah that's better so let's just start with one side for now so i'm just going to apply some glue it doesn't need to be much at all to this side put it aside let it dry for a few seconds And now we're going to wrap this piece of yarn around the wire to cover it. So in the beginning, make sure that you nicely cover the base. The more you go ahead and wrap it around, the easier it gets. Just making sure there are no gaps and everything is nicely covered. If the if you find that your glue is still too liquid, you can wait a bit. And 
wrap and wrap and wrap almost all the way to the top, not quite to the top. We want to leave this last bit because this is what we're going to bend over. I should have had my pliers ready. So this part we're going to bend over. You could also, if you don't have them, you can use your fingers, but with my wire it's really quite hard. I hope you can find tools if you don't have pliers, such as tweezers maybe, to do this. Or maybe your wire isn't as um, maybe your wire isn't as firm. Mine is quite firm. Oh, be careful not to get stuck on the on the leg. And so once this is done, we can cut this excess yarn off. And now we'll just apply a little drop of glue here just to secure it a little more. That's enough. And we repeat this with the other side as well. Everything we just did. So maybe spread them a bit further apart for now. And then just wrap. And again, leaving the last bit open so that we can see. Yeah, you can compare if it's the same length now. And then bend this last bit here over. And then cut off the excess yarn. And a final drop of glue to fix everything. And that's it. So that's the first set of legs done. We'll shape them later. Let's first attach the second set. And so between the first and second set, there are two rows space in between. So actually, that seems very firm, that part of the body, maybe because I've woven in all the <laughs> yarn ends there. So I actually start with the yarn. So one, two rows above the um, first set of legs. So that's one, two, three between round three and four. And so go to one side and exit on the other side, making sure it's all centered. <laughs> there we go. So maybe it's easier now to get the wire through the same spot. Yeah. Hmm. I've thought of that before. 
So that's it. So the wire should be nice and centered as well as the yarn. There we go. And then we just repeat all of this. So we bend the wire upward. And then we apply some glue to it. <sighs> Let it dry a little bit. And then start wrapping. And then bend it over. Cut off the excess and final drop of glue. And then with the other side. That's it. So this is the legs done. Oh, forgot the final drop of glue. So while this is drying, we can go ahead and prepare the yarn for the tongue. There's a scientific term for it, but I don't know how to pronounce it, so let's just call it tongue. <laughs> so I'm splitting this piece of yarn. It's only maybe it's longer than 20 centimeters, 8 inches, but we don't really need more than 8 inches or 20 centimeters. Um, yeah, it's a little bit longer than that, maybe 25 centimeters or 10 inches. And so we thread this on our yarn needle. And then we insert it centered here in between round one and two, but stitching through the magic ring here. The center of round one. So this is where I'm going through with my needle. Again, a smaller needle would have been enough. <laughs> and so then we pull the ends. So that they are both the same length. And now it's best to turn it this way, upside down. Now we need our glue again. Oh, we got a drop there. Hanging down, which is perfect because now we apply glue to this lower bit, like the lower, lower maybe five centimeters, two inches 
of this piece of yarn. I think I'm going higher than five centimeter. Maybe maybe seven centimeter. Almost three inches. So when that the glue is applied, then we twist it. We twist it and twist until it's twisted all the way to the um, you know at the base here where the head is once it's nice and twisted but not too much so you don't want it to you know roll into itself so once it's nice and firmly twisted we hold it this way until the glue is dry and this shouldn't take too long with super glue so once it has dried a bit we can cut it off here that's around five centimeters a little bit less i think for me and now if it's dry enough so that it doesn't ruin your pliers you can get some around pliers if you have them if you don't you could use two toothpicks or you know to kind of get hold of of this so yeah I, I think toothpicks would be more the right size chopsticks would be too large um, I would try and go for toothpicks of course it's very helpful to have pliers like this so with this you get a hold of the end and then you roll everything up and so if it's still too wet, so it ruins your pliers, then wait a bit longer. And this is a little bit tricky, <laughs> so. You need to hold the pliers and at the same time. the same time turn to roll and so hold it in this position for a bit it's halfway rolled up I mean there's still like two centimeters which is less than one inch that it didn't roll up Then remove it once you feel like staying in position. If you got glue on your pliers, then remove it now quickly. <laughs> And while this is drying fully, we can start shaping the legs. And so I spread them a bit further apart. Let's just get the wings out of the way. And then at the middle, at the center of each leg, I bend it inward almost 90 degrees, like this. At the center, roughly. I may need to spread them apart a bit more. So here at the center of each leg, bend it inward almost 90 degrees. And that's it. And then for the feet, we just grab these little ends here and bend them outward. That's it. So this is how it looks from the back. And so in the end, we'll put some drops of glue there so that it, everything stays in 
position but first let's attach the antenna and so for this we need our shorter piece of wire but again I will first attach the yarn piece so now we take the third yarn piece and we just go through here through round somewhere in between round one and two um quite yeah far on the top here i mean i'm only um, catching one stitch bring that through yeah so now there's about one stitch space in between both ends and this little yellow piece of embroidery thread i'm just trying to hide there we go so this is the yarn and then we insert the wire as well for me this was some wire for jewelry making so this one isn't as firm as the one i used for the legs but I just split my yarn with it, so let's try that again. There we go. So both the wire should be, both the wire and the yarn should be centered. And so now we, as we did with the legs, we fold this wire up. And then we apply glue to it. To one side first. And then we begin wrapping making sure we start wrapping from the base and going round and round and round and just leave a small short end here open and pulling this one forward just to secure the end here of the yarn and as we did with the legs we cut off the excess yarn And add a drop of glue. Here we go. Now we, oops. <laughs> now we repeat this with the other side.
portion of the excess and here as well oh this can be actually closed more firmly add a drop of glue So the antenna we can slightly bend, that looks kind of cute, so just bend it a bit, that was my husband yawning, if you heard that, hopefully not, <laughs> and so Now we want the antenna to stay in position and so we apply a drop of glue here and here. And leave that to dry for a moment. So once the antenna have dried, we can turn everything around and put the legs into position. Oh, this one is a bit, this wire in there is turned out a bit long. That's okay. So. I think this is the ideal position with the four legs pointing a bit forward and the hind legs pointing a bit backward and this way I think I will be able to stand on the legs. So I apply a drop of glue on the base of the legs. And then we let this dry for a moment as well. And then once everything is nice and dry and firm, then you can turn it around and it should be able to stand on its legs. So here's our original. And so lovely people, very, very well done. Just to remind you again, there's a PDF version of this pattern with many many step-by-step -step images that's available on etsy as well as revelry i'm not sure about revelry yet but definitely etsy and a version on ribla as well so that's where you can find the written version for a low fee that's a great way to support my channel and yes Thank you so, so much. I'm just so happy our lovely community of Amigurumi enthusiasts has now reached the 40k mark. So I just wanted to say I'm so, so thankful for each and every single one of you. Every time you use one of my patterns, uh, my heart sings. So please um, share your creations with me. Keep them coming. Um, please always make sure to tag me directly on the photo on Instagram. So if I don't go online for a while, I don't want your post to get buried and um, I don't and then I never find it. So if you tag at Stellasian Universe on the photo, then I can go to tagged posts and then I can always see them. And also this is a chance to win one of my paid patterns. Um, it's the monthly chance although I don't do the giveaway monthly. Um, I mean, most of the time I'm, something comes up and I do it <laughs> every couple of months or every three to four months, but the number of winners is always fair. So there's always one winner per month. So if I don't do it for four months, then there are 
four winners and if I do it the next month then there's one winner so by sharing your Stella's Yarn Universe creation you are automatically in the draw for that and so I hope you enjoyed this project if you did please give me a big like and share it with anyone who think might enjoy it too and if you're not yet subscribed then please do so and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my future amigurumi tutorials and also i always have polls going on so you can vote which project you would like me to crochet next so i hope there won't be much time until the next one i'll share a poll about it too and if you voted for a different project um, the ducks and other um, dragonfly then you can find the written patterns for those ducks and not yet as I'm recording this but in future so all my patterns are on Etsy and most of them on Ribla as well so you can find the link to my shops in the description box below and so once again thank you very much for your time and happy crocheting See you next time. Bye.